Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Park Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, here we are, another Tuesday. We are mid-August and the year is flowing. I wonder, and how are you feeling? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling in this summer uh, scorching heat? If you are in California, you know it is going to be burning. I feel like a weather cast and I'm going to say, hello, Victor, how are you? Hi, Manishi. Well, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, and by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. So for those of you who know me, welcome back to Heal Talk Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about uncertainty and how we can clear our surrounding, our inner being, and our outer being, right? Our surrounding is our outer being, but how do we cleanse and heal and detox the inner being? So when I talk about uncertainty, it's, uh, it's about what is it that I want? It's either what are my plans today, it's what are my plans for this week, or what are my plans in life? A part of hypnotherapy is when clients come in, I ask them what is it that they want? What is it that they want to create? So what is the issue that they have? Evoking the issue by understanding it and delving deeper into the subconscious mind to bring it to surface and then embracing what is the reality, where they are in life right now, and evolving to what is it that they want. And if they come in and say, well, this is my issue, and my question is, but what is it that you want to feel? And they are stumped. That is when there is no clarity. What is it that you want to create in your life? Do you want peace? Do you want freedom from your pain? Do you want calmness? Do you want to sleep better? Or you just want to stop the anxiety? So if we stop the anxiety, if we stop the uncertainty, what is it that we want to achieve? That in itself is probably more important than getting rid of something, getting that thing letting go yes we want to let go of certain things in our in our life but what is it that we want so that's my question to you hello mark hi Sada john how are you awesome heel pack yes and that's my question just like you said john when you want to create an art when we want to paint something an artist usually starts with a clear canvas nothing on it but once we start, once the stroke, the brush is on the canvas, the first paint, it's like there is an intuition, there is something we want to create. By being in front of the canvas already, it says, I want to draw, I want to paint, I want to create something beautiful. It's art. Now, how it turns out, what it is, in itself and we might have a model or a picture that we want or an idea but the idea is there and then the colors may change the form may change it may blossom to something else but we always have something so when a client comes and says like last week comes and tells me I have been in a very uh, bad relationship and I keep picking the wrong people. My question to her was, what is it that you want to attract? What kind of a person would you want to be with? So if you have been attracting certain things and she says, it, so there must be something wrong with me. No, it's not something wrong with you or wrong with a person we are attracting. But what is it that we want in our life? And the same thing goes with our business. If I want to change the format of my business, if I want to grow my business, 
What is it that I want to achieve? Making a lot of money? Great. For what? What is the tangible reason for making a lot of money? So if we want to give more and we want to become a philanthropist or we want to retire, retire for what? Right? So retirement in itself means an ending to something, but we want to end something for something better. And that is today's um, Hill Talk Tuesday. Have you stopped something? Have you ended something? Have you let go of something for something better? And if you have, what was it? Did you have a plan? Did you have an intention before you let it go? So how does it feel being in flow? It's like, what does it feel like being in hypnosis? So many have this misconception of what hypnosis or hypnotherapy is about. Mm -hmm. A client did a testimonial and it was one of the most profound testimonials of how this person felt coming in to see me and what exactly did they feel? You see, the misconception was that once my client came in, they're going to feel stress and I'm going to take their stress away. And hypnosis was that I'm going to take them to a place that they have absolutely no control. They're going to be asleep. Actually, hypnosis is far from sleep. It's sleep-like. And yet it is not. So the question was, do you use a pendulum? I do have a pendulum. I could use a pendulum. And yet I have not used a pendulum in a long, long time. Let me see if I do have a pendulum. Hmm. I do have it, but it's right there. It's not next to me. It's usually next to my recliner for those who want me to use a pendulum, and I usually use the pendulum. And the usual, we use the pendulum for focus so that we can have them go side by side and just focus on the movement and the beautiful rays of the pendulum. Actually, give me a moment. Let me bring the pendulum. Ah, thank you for waiting. There you go. Isn't this pendulum absolutely amazing? Look, I can just hold it. And without even moving, I can ask it something and concentrate my entire energy. This way is yes or no. Sideways will be um, no response. So it stopped. Now without moving and thinking, I'm going to ask my body and the pendulum to say if it is okay for me to use the pendulum. Hmm. Is it okay for us to showcase the pendulum? And very gently, it is a yes. Now I'm going to state an affirmation that it's a reality. My name is Lisa. And here is why I love the pendulum. It already has my energy and look what is gonna happen. My name is Lisa.
and it is a true fact that my name is Lisa. <laughs> so as I hold the pendulum, my hand is getting tired. You will see that the pendulum begins to work with the energy that flows. Right now, I am holding it too high. And as I do, usually this pendulum, because it has my energy, starts, ah, there you go. It starts moving and it loves going round and about. Okay, I know you're talking to me. But see, this is the beauty of the pendulum. Because I have worked with this pendulum without even moving my hand, automatically it starts working. So what we do with our clients, I don't even have to use the pendulum, the beauty of this pendulum, but my own voice, the sound of my voice, asking my client to take a nice deep breath. And as they breathe, everyone can go into and do their own self-hypnosis, go into that place of certain serenity and comfort only if they close their eyes and listen to the sound of their own breath breathing. And you can do the same thing very gently without even closing your eyes. You can breathe in and only listen to the sound of your voice and exhale. And by listening to the sound of your own breath, and if you put your hands on your ears and the sound magnifies, it's like putting the seashells in there and listening into the seashells. So in a way, what we do is ask our clients to concentrate within themselves their own breath, the way they move, the way their body feels, and tap into every nerve, every muscle, every organ, every tissue, every cell, every essence of their own being. And as I say this, you too can easily and gently just allow with your eyes open or closed, just tap in and become aware, even the tiny hair on your body, your arms, your legs, and even the hair that you do not see, very subtle and light. It's all over. Even your facial hair, the hair on your head, your eyebrows, your arms, and for some, gentlemen on their chest and realize that every single pore on your body, the hair that stands when you get goosebump, those are all antennas that take the surroundings and feel the energy and allow you to either become alert or calm, feeling safe or on guard. And as you give yourself permission to close your eyes, what you do is you shut out and shut down everything that is outside of your peripheral vision so that you can see within yourself and visualize. So in a way, 
what I do with my clients is guide them so they can visualize what is it that they want to create, to feel, to be, and to know. Recognizing that what we evoke truly is our history. And whatever pain and hurt and trauma occurred long time ago is not happening at this very moment. Those are just memories. And we can just, with our eyes closed or even eyes open, be witness to what occurred. And there's three parts within us, three egos. The inner child, the ego of the inner child. And there is the ego of the adult. And then there is the ego of the parent, which is the person that safeguards us, analyzes and judges, and makes sure we are safe. And yet, even with the criticism, wants to make sure that you are alert and aware. And the inner child is the one that is fearless or tantrum. The one that is seeing it all, feeling it all. And as an adult, so what we do, have a dialogue as an adult that is sitting there. And if I have a child, even a child has the adult self, the little boy, little girl, and the parent within them. So we have this dialogue to make sure that they are safe first that what they're seeing and witnessing is not happening now and how they can go sit next to that inner self that is in pain, that is hurt, that is depressed, or the smoker, or the overweight, the one with cancer, or the one with the baby. It doesn't matter. That they can easily and gently guide the inner child to feel safe, hold their hand, and imagine empowering them, supporting, and then saying, I am with you, holding your hand, and asking the parent to safeguard both of them, and in times of need, and of course, this therapy, this dialogue and everything, it's not as simple as this five minutes, 10 minutes or half an hour, but it probably takes more than an hour and a half of the session that I do. And it's beautiful what we call it, parts therapy, that each part has its own magnificent safety, knowing that I hold space for you, for my client. And in the same time, that they do the inner work. I have absolutely no power over what goes on, the inner dialogue. And yet, I am there to guide and hold space. And recognize if you at this very moment have been closing your own eyes and delving deeper, perhaps coming up one issue. Let's do this. If you can come up with one thing that you wanted to change, and if I were to ask you, be the adult and just imagine in your own mind's eye tapping with that inner child, and it can be at the time that you were very young, perhaps teenage times, or whenever it is that your unconscious, subconscious mind taps into and brings it forward, it doesn't matter. There is no wrong, there is no right, it doesn't have any certain timeline, but the timeline at that you remember. And as you remember that moment, just be with that time. 
because there is a reason that part of you came to surface. There is layers and layers of you. And if you could just recognize that moment and just say, I remember. Thank you. And ask that part of you, what is the message? There's always a message. There is always a reason that we recall a moment. And if you become clear with that very moment, and the message may be clear at this very moment or maybe an hour from now, or perhaps tonight as you drop into that wonderful drifting deep into sleep and then it comes into your dream and solves a problem that you truly needed to, then the work has been done. You see, even when we do hypnotherapy, sometimes the answer is not right there all the time. But once we open, once we allow the flower to open and begin the blossoming, opening our mind and our heart, that's the beauty of it. Not everything happens immediately transformation may not be immediately and yet there's people who are so ready that the aha shows up right there at that moment everyone is different every single human being is unique and that is our beauty our beauty is in our perfection and our perfection comes from our imperfection. And that is what I help my clients embrace. So let me tap right here. Oh, hi, Mark. Hello, Leanna John. How are you? If there is any question, hello, Sandra. Hi, Aline. Um, I want to know if there is an issue, a problem, something that you wanted to solve. And if you wanted to take this very moment and do this work on your own, in your time, believe it or not, all the answers will come to you. And if there's something more that you would like me to help you with, something that you can't tap into, the way of hypnosis that works is I tap into the subconscious mind where all the information, every single thing from our from the time that we are born until now, it's like the archive of everything. Every book you have read, the archive of this is your life is in our subconscious. So as I take my clients into that place that they feel comfortable, safe, and they give themselves permission to tap into, that's when magic happens. So in a way, what I do is I help my clients learn how to do self-hypnosis in order to do the work on their own. So they are not, um, they're not coming here for years and years of therapy or even months and months of therapy. I truly believe that within seven to nine sessions, you can find solutions to most of what you need right so if it is to stop smoking and smoking cessation usually it's within three to five sessions sometimes it's even two to three sessions for weight i say there are so many layers and layers and layers that we have just put upon ourselves to safeguard ourselves, to protect ourselves. It takes a while for us to peel away those layers. And it's suppressing all those feelings inside. And that is sometimes why people go into depression because they are deeply suppressed 
some deeply suppress some of the emotions that they didn't want to see it, they did not want to recognize it, or that they have not given themselves permission to forgive themselves and let it go. In a way, it's unraveling what we have done. Just think of it. If you put just plaster over plaster, even in construction, at the end, you're going to see that plaster gets so heavy that eventually it's going to crumble. Even without you doing anything, you can just touch it and it crumbles. Why? Because it's so heavy that the glue cannot hold that the glue cannot hold it anymore. It can no longer bear the weight. So plaster over plaster, layer over layer, and it just goes like that. And eventually it's gonna drop. So that is in a way, in a nutshell, what I help you with. To heal within, we must evoke what was embrace what is and evolve to the best version of who we are. This is Lisa Bubari and this has been an incredible Heal Talk Tuesday. Inner clarity comes from the moment you say yes to you because you do matter. And if someone else has not said that to you today, I want you to say this to you. I matter. I accept and appreciate myself far more deeply than ever before. Thank you for being I'm part of Heal Talk Tuesday. This is Lisa. And I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. And thank you for all of you who send me messages and say thank you. Because without you, I would not be here. And I always have to say thank you for those of you who watch my Heal Talk Tuesdays and do not put a comment like my favorite uh, person right here. Hello, Adrian. Uh, Mark, for being here, for being one of my biggest cheerleaders. Uh, hopefully one day we will meet in person. And what else? For those of you, yes who watch the Heal Talk Tuesday and say, oh my God, I thought you were talking to me. Well, you know what? Thank you to you as well. And next time, don't be shy. Write something, say something. I always respond to every single message. God bless you and may the universal light be with you. Until next week, bye-bye.